I've missed you. Um, I just got back literally last night from the US. I was visiting some family. So yeah, I haven't been home for about 10 days. So I'm, I'm a little bit out of it. And also we are going to be moving apartments in 10 days from now. Um, so just a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. But for this video, I want to film a little reading vlog. I have some reading goals that I just kind of want to like tick off my list and I don't think I can motivate myself to do it without you guys holding me accountable so I'm gonna film it and force myself to do these things. So number one on the list, I am going to go get a library card for Seoul. So you guys might know this but most of my reading is done through the library. I have a library card for San Diego where I'm from. I have a library card for Philadelphia where my parents live. I'm always using Libby and I used Overdrive, rest in peace, they combined. I use Libby for 99.9% .9 of the books that I read. And when I moved to Korea, I'm now, I'm going on my 10th year of living in Korea. And when I first moved here, I was a student. Of course, I looked into the library and the selection for English language books was quite underwhelming, I'll say, in 2012, 2013. Kind of the same thing with the English language selection of books in bookstores. I would compare it to like a very small and sad airport bookstore, like that kind of selection. But nowadays it has expanded so much and the bookstores have a dangerously good selection here um, for English language books. And I don't know why I never considered that the library would also be evolving and improving alongside bookstores. I I don't know. Also, I guess because like the library location just isn't excellent. There are libraries around the city, which I think I need to explore more. But in terms of like the main library that I know of, it's just not an area I'm in often. But I have decided that enough is enough. I need to go get myself a library card for Seoul. So that's what we're going to do. I already made my account online. So hopefully tomorrow I should be able to just walk in and they'll give me my card. Uh, we'll see. Um, other things I want to do because I am in this weird limbo period of I need to pack my house, but it's a little too early to pack my house. Like if I start packing now, I will then have like a week of living out of moving boxes. I'm really trying to distract myself from packing. So I have a couple books that I want to read. Last night before jet lag struck, I read about 20 pages of Annie Bot, which I got from Book of the Month. It's a short one. I think it's only like 230. It's only 230 pages. So I'm going to try and crush this today. And then I have... My Kindle's been through a lot this past week. Um, And then I have a... I thought it was a duology. My Kindle is telling me that there's allegedly three books that... The third hasn't come out yet. I don't know. I'm preparing myself for pain, but there is a series that the Peruse Project recommended, um, which is a romanticy that she really enjoyed. And we tend to have pretty similar tastes in books. Um, and I just, again, looking for something to really grab my attention and distract me. So this is Phoenix Unbound and then Dragon Unleashed. I will them up here. Um, I'm really, really hoping it's a duology. I have a feeling it's not going to be, but I want to read those as well. And I think that is how much I'm going to ask of myself in terms of like how much reading I think I'm going to get done in the course of this reading vlog. But yeah, I just spent the day, it's around 3 p.m. I think. I spent the day editing up my USA vlog. So if you want to check that out, uh, it should be out already. Carrie Cakes my other channel it's always linked yeah let's get reading i don't know if i want to go outside because it's kind of gross out or if i want to just read at home i'll make the call but either way we're gonna read and then i'll see you tomorrow at the library okay thanks for being here welcome back to korea let's read to page 75 um but now i've got to go meet kurt for dinner i did take a jet laggy nap but mm, i'll be out
is just because it is a weird transition into summer or what, but they did not have the air conditioning on in there. <gasps> oh my gosh, okay, real quick. Uh, finished Annie Bot. This is a book that I think I'm going to need to return to. Um, the windows are open, it's super hot, sorry for the noise. Um, this is a book I think I'm gonna need to return to because I think even on the second read, it would be really excellent. This is about a robot named Annie whose owner has changed her um, to be, what is the word? Essentially, she's able to like learn and grow and kind of have her own personality. She originally was bought to be a house cleaner bot um, and then he switched her to be a cuddle bunny bot, which is basically like a sex toy. And allegedly her owner is one of the good guys because he's like quite respectful of her, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we just follow her as she continues to learn and continues to grow and continues to realize the situation that she's in. And at first I kind of didn't love it because it was just a lot of like sex scenes, <laughs> but then you kind of get into it more and I actually did really like it. And again, I think on a second read, it would be even better because I sort of found myself thinking in the way that she thought sometimes because she doesn't know any better. So she's kind of like, no, Doug is really nice to me. And I'm like, actually, he's like, kind of being nice. I don't know. There were like moments where I suddenly caught myself and I was like, oh, what? Like, um, yeah, it was just, it was very interesting in like a very short book. Um, and I think I'm gonna DNF the Phoenix, whatever the heck, I'm about 25% of the way through and it's just not my style of book, I don't think it's about, oop, hey, stop, hold on, let me put my broccoli into my pasta. Sorry, I'm starving and I'm making lunch. Um, So Phoenix, whatever, um, is about a evil empire that every year requires this like mass sacrifice execution of women and our main girl has some kind of firepower. And so every year she goes back um, and disguises herself and she can like live through fire so no one from her village has to be the tribute to die every year because she goes um but they also have these gladiators who are men who are enslaved by the empire and are sent to just be like entertainment fighters whatever and one of the gladiators recognizes her from the previous years and wants her to help him escape. And so then we go on this adventure together. Just not really um, my like writing style. It was very, I don't know, third person, a little detached. They said I a lot, all the guys kind of sounded like pirates. Um, not, not for me, not right now. But now I'm home and I have some work to do. So I'm going to eat my lunch and do that. But I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. Uh, which is Skillshare and I'm actually super duper excited to talk about it because Skillshare is an online learning community, right? Tons of classes in everything you can possibly think of. They have this new feature called Learning Paths where they take all of these classes, curate them into courses that by the end of it, you can learn a new skill very in depth. So they have a lot for creative professionals. So if you're looking to become a booktuber or something like that, um, they have really great classes for just like from the very, very basics to the more advanced. Um, really, hey, stop, hold on my pasta. So yeah, they have really great classes. Um, I've done a lot of their like graphic design classes. They literally have classes for like how to even be confident speaking in front of a camera, things like that. So really wonderful. But why I'm super excited is I just launched my second class on Skillshare. Um, a couple years ago, I made a class about just the very basics of vlogging, sort of what you need to think about, um, kind of the structure of a vlog, things like that. Um, but this one is a little bit more, not advanced, but I guess kind of the behind the scenes nitty gritty part of being a YouTuber. Um, I talk about how I manage my channels when it comes to scheduling, planning out content, managing my finances, working with sponsors. I give you a couple templates for like my calendars and stuff like that. So all of that will be linked down below. Um, and then I have a bonus link where the first 500 people to click it will get one month free of Skillshare. So if you wanna try my classes, go get that link. So thank you as always to Skillshare. Obviously I love you very, very much. Um, and 
I'm gonna go eat and then I'm going to have a little book haul with you. Yes, I am starving so I literally can't form sentences. See you in a second. <laughs> As promised, a book haul. So I didn't get anything at the library today because like I said earlier in this video, I'm moving. So I don't want to risk losing a library book during the move and I know I won't have time to go back and physically return them. But uh, today we're talking about books that I have purchased. So where do I start? Where do I start? These are two books that I've been waiting on for a while uh, and they finally came in. This is a girl's story by Annie Arnaud, which I'm very excited about. And I love this edition, just the very blank page. This will be my first Annie Arnaud, so I'm very excited to start this one. Um, been waiting for this for forever. This teeny little book, it weighs nothing. <laughs> Um, this is The Orange and Other Poems by Wendy Cope. If you guys know the It's a Great Day, I'm Happy to Be Alive, that poem about peeling of massive orange, um, that is this one. And then a few of her other poems. So I'm very excited and it's also just very adorable. Another book I got when I was in Pennsylvania, I got the physical of um, All Systems Red, the first of the Murderbot Diaries. I got it mainly because I enjoyed it and would like it on my bookshelf. And I love the cover and it feels really nice. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a very nice paper that they use. Um, but also Kurt wants to read this. So I bought him, he doesn't really, he does read on his Kindle, I guess he, he does but um we just bought this together at a bookstore my mom got me a gift this is the third book uh story collection by the moth <coughs> i've talked about these books before i have the other two all these wonders and occasional magic i think it's called this one is called a point of beauty and these stories are connected to holding on and letting go um, basically, The Moth is a community that holds events all throughout the world and they invite people to come and just get up on stage and tell a true story of their life. Um, it could be funny, it could be heartbreaking, but just tell us something true. And it's always set to a specific theme of that night. And um, I loved the other two books. They were just, the stories are so short. They can be like two pages to maybe 10 pages because they're basically just transcripts. It really feels like someone is just sitting down and telling you a story. Um, and like I said, they can be you can be in tears in one story and then cracking up in the next one. So I'm really excited to dive into this. So thank you, mom. And then this book, oh my God. I took such good care of this book, even though it came to me already with a slight rip. I pre-ordered Lee Bardugo, The Familiar. Um, yeah, it came, it came to me with a little bit of a bum, a little rip, but I taped it up and it survived the cross the world trip all the way back here. Look at the edges. Oh my God. I already opened it already. So you might not be able to hear it, but listen, I think I opened them all cause I was having so much fun because of the paint. When I opened the pages, they made this really wonderful, like noise. Mm. So anyway, I actually think because I DNF'd uh, that Phoenix trilogy that I'm now not going to read, I'm gonna start this. I was kind of holding on being like, oh, I'm gonna be distracted. I'm gonna be so, you know, life is so hectic. I wanna really sink into this. I can't wait any longer. So I'm actually going to start this right now, I think. Um, I'm gonna, no. Hold on, I'm gonna be a responsible adult. I did clean my kitchen. Now I'm going to actually put away the things in my suitcase. This is now our second day. And I unpacked my suitcase, but I literally just went like, took everything out, put it on the floor. So I can't bear to look at this any longer. So I'm gonna fix that and then I'm going to dive in. She said that this is one of her most like emotional books, which terrifies me. I can't wait, I can't wait. I can't wait. So I'm going to clean and I will meet you back here to start the familiar.
snow from Seoul Forest. It's the next day. I had such a horrible jet lag nap that when Kurt called me to get dinner, I didn't know where I was. I couldn't form sentences. I thought we had a dog. I kept looking around our apartment for like, where's our dog? We don't have a dog. I was really, my like half, I felt like half of my brain was still asleep. It was very bizarre. So needless to say, I didn't read that much. I'm only on page 45, chapter eight. I'm not sure where this is going so far. I like the writing style, but I'm just like not sure what's going on. So in we go. because I was just curled up on the sofa. It is done. How do I describe this? So when I left you off at like 40-ish pages and I said that I didn't know where this was going, yeah, I didn't. I would say it took me until solidly 50% of this book to like fully get into it. And then I would say the last 30 to 40 pages were so fast paced and the ending, literally the last like three pages threw me for a loop. <laughs> I will say that this was very much not what I expected. I'm not sure quite what I expected, but this definitely was very different from her writing. I think that with Ninth House and with like Six of Crows, I could see connections there with the writing but this one felt like I said quite different I think because she was really really trying to hone in on the historical fiction aspect of this rather than trying to write a fantasy or like what do we call ninth house <laughs> I don't know what that is um there were a lot of points like especially in the beginning where I felt like she added in details simply to justify the amount of research that must have gone into this i was sort of like okay lee we get it you studied like you didn't need to put that in there overall though i will say that i liked it it took me until pretty much the last page to decide how i felt about it it was not a letdown it was just i think i needed to put aside a lot of my expectations i think if i had read this just as like not knowing lee bardugo i would have i would have liked it i don't know if it would have been like a favorite but i still think i would have liked it regardless of my kind of loyalty to Lee. I think that my only real issue was that we didn't really see the love develop. I think that a lot of the like lessons that um, our two main characters had together and like the time that they spent together was often a little bit off of the page. Like we'd get a hint of it like, hello, good morning. How are you? We'd have like a short conversation and then the scene would cut and they would have had more time together off the page and we just kind of have to imagine that so then once the strong feelings were revealed I was sort of like oh, I wish I had seen that develop a little bit more um it would have been a little bit more hard hitting but overall um I did like it I think I might like it more on like a second read I also felt like the reason that I didn't really understand where this was going based on the first 40 pages is that there are a lot of characters in here and they're given, they're each given like proper time. So at first as I was reading it, I was like, is Valentina the main character? Is Lucia the main character? Like who are we focusing on? Technically, yeah, Lucia, yeah, she's our main character for sure. But she gave so much time to her side characters that in the beginning it felt a little bit like, where are we going with this? Um, so yeah, I think, I think that this will be a really like love or hate book for some people. I wonder how everyone's gonna feel about the ending. Absolutely no spoilers. I actually have decided that I really like the ending. I think that, yeah, 
I don't want to do no spoilers but I did like the ending I'm glad that I read it I'm glad that I have it just a very different experience than what I was than what I thought it was gonna be but hit or miss for sure definitely don't go into this because you're a fan of fantasy i felt like the magic was interesting but like sort of even though it is like a main part of the plot i was sort of like that's not the most important part you know um so yeah i i do i would say still give it a try but i can't guarantee you're gonna love this book i did so that is the familia oh my goodness and then i just got a bunch of books let me get my... I just got a bunch of books from the library. They all came in at the same time. Um, I need to read... What do I have? The new sign on my Kindle is blocking every author's name. So I have to read... I'll, so I'll put them up here. So I have to read The Wager, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder. I also have Elena Knows. Another one I'm really looking forward to is Butter. This is a novel of food and murder and I'm stoked to read that. And then I also got The Tainted Cup, which I've heard great things about. And apparently it's kind of like Sherlock Holmes meets fantasy. So that's what's on my TBR for the month, but I need to settle down and uh, go listen to the new Taylor Swift album. It came out about an hour ago, so I'm going to do that. But thank you so much for joining me. Let me know your thoughts on this, on Annie Bot, on the books that I have waiting for me. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to like it more. Like the more that I think about it, the more I'm enjoying it. And I just love the atmosphere of like this kind of during the Spanish Inquisition. So many subtle jabs at Queen Elizabeth I, which I loved. Um, yeah, that's just like, I've said it before, but like I was one of those kids who was obsessed with the Tudors, specifically Queen Elizabeth I. So like to have anything in this time period in Europe, I'm in. So yeah, thank you, Lee. I could tell that she put a lot of love and, and research into this book. So I hope that she's happy with it and, and knows that a lot of us enjoyed it. It was definitely like a risk, very, very different from anything she's ever written. So anyway, um, I'm gonna leave you guys here because now I have to transition into packing. As I said in the beginning of this video, I have many a book <laughs> to put in boxes and yeah. We're also moving to an apartment that is so much quieter, like so much quieter. I'm really excited. So yeah, um, if you wanna see any of that or like bookshelf, organization stuff like that that's all gonna be on my other channel carry cakes link down below um and speaking of link down below thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring this video uh you can find the link in the description box first 500 people to click it will get a month free of skillshare once again i have a new class i have two classes now that you can check out if you're interested in starting youtube or if you have a youtube channel and you feel a little messy if you want a little help with organization I got you. So um, thank you as always to Skillshare. All that info is right down below. And yes, I will see you guys next time. And I'm going to go listen to the tortured poets department. Okay? Okay. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>